Well, we had sunshine, we had a great view of the skyline, we had warm water, but we had very cold air. I'm glad uh, we took the boat out to the, to the side here. something that I wanted to do for a long time. I mean, when, uh, when we first thought about rebuilding Germania, uh, I was hoping to come here and, and uh, have a look uh, at the wreck. I had seen a model of this in the Krupp Mansion, the Villa Hügel in Germany, and it had fascinated me because, you know, it has, has a certain aesthetic to it that is um, very much unlike present day ships. Uh, modern ships. Um, so um, it wasn't necessarily what I considered beautiful at that time, but that's when I decided, okay, let's build this, let's build it professionally and try to get it done soon because we want to use the ship. We're sitting on the coast of Florida, very, very close to where the original went down. And uh, Germania was built by by Bertha Krupp as a present for her husband. Uh, somebody who, who worked in the German steel industry, the name Krupp is very important. And this was the first Krupp yacht, Germania 1. And um, it actually wasn't called Germania 1 because nobody could imagine that there would be a second Germania. So she was built in the, in the Krupp yard in 1908 and she started racing immediately. I don't know how our crew was made up in those days, um, except that there were a lot of them. And she had a good career up until 1914. And in 1914, she found herself in the wrong place at the wrong time. So she was taken into Portsmouth. And as far as I know, um, she spent the war years in Portsmouth and then after the war, uh, she went as reparations to the United States. And um, when she was sent to the States, they changed the name from Germania to Half Moon. She left for Florida, I believe, had a bad voyage down, and there was no more mention of her. Until in the late 20s or the early 30s, she ended up as a casino and um, drinking den moored off, off, just off Miami, just over there. And a hurricane came along and basically she just dragged her anchors and fetched up on the bricks and uh, sank beneath the waves. And of course, we knew Half Moon had sunk here in Florida. So I always thought uh, we need to go down here and let the, the new Germania visit the old Germania. dive was fascinating to me. There was some current, you know, we were floating along the wreck and uh, to be able to touch the original was quite emotional for me.
we saw the plaque that said Half Moon, we were happy. They also mentioned that she was formerly called Germania. But uh, that plaque was hardly legible anymore. So I wanted to brush it off so that everybody could see it better. You see the dimensions of the boat. The bow was in surprisingly good conditions. You know, you could see the uh, where the bow speed was fixed before. Uh, you could see the uh, holes for the anchor chains through the deck. Uh, then I was surprised. You could see some uh, remainders of the planks of the hull, you know, of the of the sheet metal. Uh, but what was most stunning were the, the colorful fish and the, the coral that was that was growing around it. So you see, nature took possession again of the man-made things. But I, it, I, I guess it's some, somewhat emotional, you know, you, you go back to the replica, see how well she performs and then down here she's she sits on soft, soft uh, sand with lots of fish. There were much more, many more fish than I thought there would be. But I'm glad we're back on the replica now. <laughs> When the rig and the crew is in harmony, the sails are looking good, the weather conditions are perfect, it's just fantastic. You know, the, the dedication that we need, that the crew needs, is essential. Um, to set all our sails well, it requires a very good team, and I've got a very good team on board. I encourage my crew to learn how to sew, because I say, if you can sew, you can repair any boat that sail on this ship. You don't need to go to the sail maker. If you can splice, you can make your own lines up. You don't have to go to the rigger. And I said, and if you can do leather work, when you walk down the, walk down the deck, you look at the piece of leather and you say, I did that, and it's a nice piece of work, you know? So I encourage all of those things because I think that's what gives a crew a pride in their vessel. The Germania Nova is obviously a replica of Germania. And I would say that most of my crew on board here would have been able to have sailed on the original Germania. They might not have been as strong because we've got the hydraulic winches, but the actual, the techniques used, uh, the process of setting the sails, which lines do what, um, the order that the sails need to be set, all of these things, we're doing the same as the original Germania. But at the same time, the original Germania, to do the sail that we did today, she might have had 25 people on board. And with all of these, whether they're replicas or whether they're um, old ones that have been re fully restored, what you will find is a tremendous amount of just dedicated enthusiasm on the parts of the crew for their ships. Without that, these ships don't work. 
you have to have it. You have to have that drive and you have to have the lo that love for that particular sort of vessel. She is fast, she's strong. I find that she'll give you, how they say, blood, sweat and tears. She, she gives everything. She's beautiful, she's lovely. But when she's furious with the, with the wind, when she's on it, she, you better be careful and treat, you have to be very careful with that. She's, she's lovely. She's just the fact that she's a classic. Um, she's got a classic rig and she sails amazing. And um, it's just a joy sailing with her. All the sails are up, she seems to go really well and turns corners quite nicely. She's a wonderful ship. She's a wonderful, wonderful ship. She's a bit difficult. <laughs> Makes you quite proud, I think. You know, you kind of see it from a distance or something. You're like, that's my boat. I work on that one. <laughs> uh, but um, there's a special breed of people that wants this. They even accept that because of the narrow hull, uh, the crew quarters are very, very narrow. Uh, but they enjoy it. They're together. We've, it has a great, uh, it's a great spirit on this boat. Everybody helps everybody. But then also we go out and celebrate together, so I think we have a very good relationship. The next stop was Charleston. Uh, it made sense uh, to bridge uh, Miami, Florida, uh, to New York with a stopover in the real south. Charleston is a lovely old city, and my family saw a beautiful old city full of history and uh, lots of good restaurants. The crew, of course, it is, it's, uh, they're all quite competitive. Um, they're excellent sailors. Uh, the seamanship is uh, second to none. They wanted to sail Germania under the new bridge in Charleston, so they took the boat out and sailed her right under. That was fantastic. When you see her pick up the wind, uh, when, 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 you're, when you're starting to sail, that's a, a feeling that is unrivaled, you know, it's, uh, well, I could describe it with male words, but they are not politically correct. You know, she's a head turner. When she flies into a, a harbor, uh, people stop by, but, you know, we've seen uh, many boats uh, passing us by, people just applauding, saying what a great boat this was. It brings back um, the spirit of an era that's long gone by. You know, certain aesthetics and beauty that sometimes our modern, uh, sober, you know, functional age has lost. Well, after a few days, we made sail for our next destination. We uh, wanted to take Germania Nova back to where the original boat landed when she first came to America. And that was New York City. So uh, we wanted to take the boat here and it's uh, uh, following uh, the history of the, the real, the genuine old Germania. This, this trip is kind of reverse what, uh, what Germania did um, after she was uh, confiscated in the First World War because uh, she first came to New York, then to Baltimore and then to Florida and we are kind of doing it the uh, reverse way.
when we sailed into New York Harbor, it was a great feeling to have the crew see the Statue of Liberty right next door, you know, like a, a neighbor. And um, against the background of the skyline, with the new changed skyline with the Freedom Tower now, most of them had never been to New York. And this is such a classic way to see the city for the first time. Of course, you know, you have a boat built um, and you ask yourself, um, how is this boat going to end up? You know, will it, will it be a wreck like that other one? Um, and so it is, uh, to me, it's a, a bit of a philosophical moment. But, but also, the, 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 uh, being in touch with the real you know, the, the, the original, the one that this replica was built after, um, is something special. But I mean, after all, it's a boat. 